Assalamu alaikum dear students welcome back to class i am your teacher naeem hader and we are doing this course of technical and business writing together and in today's session we are going to look at some of the modes of writing so before we uh, start the lecture i want you to just look at this picture and whatever comes to your mind whatever you observe whatever you see i want you to write about that you can write down in the comment comment box and you can write down on the paper and then you can show it to me in the class as well whatever you see whatever you observe you can simply write it down and while you are writing it down you have to write it with this uh, with this aim with this goal that uh, if you have to explain this this scene to someone without showing it the picture so how will you do that so yes so that is related to descriptive writing what we do in descriptive writing is that we try to paint a picture with words in the mind of the reader if you have to tell someone without showing it so how how do you do that you do that by describing it by painting a picture with the words now in descriptive writing we use various sensory details such as sight taste touch smell and sound now if we talk about the types of descriptive writing in descriptive writing mostly uh, we talk about people uh, biographies are basically the, uh, the the books that are written about the life events of the people uh, like if you are writing about qaid azam uh, starting from birth and uh, till his last day if you write about all of the main major uh, accomplishments uh, major events uh, education family background so if you are telling all of these things so it's basically called biography and when someone tells about himself or herself uh, if a person writes about uh, write, writes a book about his or her own life so that is called autobiography and that is part of descriptive writing it's a it's a kind of descriptive writing and other types of descriptive writing are travel writing nature writing and uh, different kind of journals like a daily record of events or uh, uh you know work that you do and similarly scripts poetry fiction writing comics so all of these are basically a different type of descriptive writing now let's uh, look at some of the examples of descriptive writing for example uh, simply telling the reader that k is uh, in a field next to a river certainly gets the point across but it does not really bring the scene to life baat to aap bata dete hain but you do not bring the scene to life instead focusing on what k is experiencing with her own senses uh, you know to really capture re your reader you can come up with that kind of description k felt the soft green grass under her feet as she stopped to look up at the clear blue sky the soft nearby bubbling of water on rocks began to sound in her ears and the smell of fresh cut daisies surrounded her like a blanket now this is how you describe things uh, using some details like clear blue sky rocks and uh, bubbling of water and fresh cut daisies blanket and uh, green grass under her feet so when you use that kind of adjectives that kind of uh, sensory details uh, it becomes more vivid and it becomes more clear to the reader what you are actually trying to say now how can we improve the descriptive writing uh, you can improve the descriptive writing by using literary devices such as metaphors similes and analogies and you can practice free writing daily to express your own feelings and thoughts about things and uh, you can study travel blogs or uh, websites and you can collect different words or synonyms adjectives and the figurative devices uh to decorate your language to beautify your language now coming next do you remember this book uh alif lala ki kahaniyan the arabian nights and the tales of 1001 nights yes so that is something related to narrative writing now what is a narrative narrative is basically a piece of text that tells a story Uh, the story can be uh, fictitious or non-fictitious fiction means uh, an uh, an unreal story and non-fiction mean the real story it is often said that there are seven key elements to a piece of narrative writing and that i'm going to ask you 
uh, in the class as well and you have to uh, you have to remember you should be knowing about these seven key elements uh, that, that are there in a piece of narrative writing the first one is characterization characterization is basically art of uh, developing characters and the next uh, part or the next key element of a narrative is uh, setting uh, setting is basically uh, the place and the time uh, of the story where the story is based and what is the time that actually makes the setting of the story and then then the theme theme is basically the basic idea that is being told or that is being expressed through the story and then the plot plot is basically the logical sequence of the events uh, long story short you know when you tell the whole story in two to three lines that is basically the the plot the basic idea the basic storyline and then the atmosphere atmosphere uh, like the overall environment in the story whether it is happy or it is nostalgic it is uh, stressful it is sad ironic and then the figurative devices and the literary devices like the use of metaphors similes personification consonants assonance and uh, the other uh, figurative devices when we are using imagery so that is basically uh, that that beautifies and decorates the language and then the last uh, element of uh, a piece of narrative writing is the point of view it can be the first person point of view the second person point of view or the third person point of view so these seven elements of a story they are very important then the examples of narrative uh, writing can be the short stories autobiographies historical texts etc now how do you feel about that and uh, what do you what, what do you think uh, what is happening in this picture and why it is happening whatever your thoughts are i want you to write about it in the comments uh, and you can write it down on the paper as well and then you can show that to me in class as well so how do you feel about that whatever your feelings are uh, whether it is whatever is happening in this picture whether it is right or wrong and if it is right then how it is right and if it is wrong then why it is wrong yes now this is something that is related to persuasive writing a persuasive text is a form of non fiction writing non fiction means reality based that aims to convince the reader of a certain point of view and uh, it adverts adverts uh, you know advertisements and the newspapers columns they are good examples of the persuasive writing and uh, you know in persuasive writing there is always a central argument like in every in every situation there are most of the times two or the more than two uh, controversies or more than two sides now in persuasive writing what you do is that you select a side and then you justify yourself you justify yourself with the help of logical uh, arguments with the help of supporting details with the help of uh, some facts uh, with the help, help of some details quotations and all of these details uh, you bring together uh, in your uh, in your piece of writing just to convince the reader about your own personal point of view and uh, you bring some evidence to support uh, the point of view and uh, you know uh, you come up with conclusion and uh, then you summarize whatever you have said uh, you know the way you start your uh, uh, your your persuasive piece of writing by the end of uh, that document you again uh, retell uh, the the reader what you actually wanted to say now the examples of persuasive writing are advertisements and uh, speeches and uh, promotional material similarly political leaflets reviews and uh, fundraising letters propaganda and the letter of recommendation cover letters and uh, op-eds and uh, editorial newspaper articles argumentative essays that are written for the academic papers so all of these are basically the examples of persuasive writing now in persuasive writing mostly uh, we use the rhetorical questions and uh, you know in persuasive writing we are not writing it to uh, to basically answer something uh, we don't need an answer but they get the reader or listener thinking you have to actually make the reader think about something okay and uh, you know uh, the the language that is used in persuasive writing is emotive and emotive language it helps to paint a picture in the mind and you share the facts and statistics in persuasive writing and there is a lot of repetition of the same concept as well and in persuasive writing uh, most of the times the writers they use the modal verbs and adverbs and uh, 
because modal verbs you can you should you could you may so these kind of modal verbs they basically call the reader to action such as must should will like you must act now you should do that you should not do that so that kind of expressions are used in uh, persuasive writing now look at this picture and whatever comes to your mind you have to write it down now expository writing that is the last mode of writing and expository writing it aims to describe explain or inform the reader about any topic and in expository writing uh, the the arguments are developed logically and then they are presented logically as well now in a scientific report you might want to include graphs charts and different kind of uh, columns different kind of rows and different kind of pictures uh, so all of these kind of information is basically uh, there to expose the reader about a concept or about an idea that you are sharing with the audience the examples of expository writing are uh, textbooks wiki pages presentations essays so all of these are basically types of expository writing now uh, news stories business writings technical writings or the scientific writings they they can be written uh, in the form of problem and solution you share the problem and then you give the solution you talk about the cause and then you talk about the effects so these are the styles that we can adopt in expository writing compare and contrast uh, you can compare and contrast two things and then you can give a definition of something and then the classification and then how to or the process essays so these kind of writings are basically the expository writing now how can you improve expository writing there are some tips that i'm sharing with you the first tip is that you have to use third person pronoun do not use first person pronoun i because you are not start, uh, you are not stating your opinion in expository writing it is the objective writing it, it's not you uh, who is basically uh, sharing the idea you are basically sharing an idea that is already there and you are just exposing the the, the reader or the audience about that concept and you have to take uh, start with a brief introduction of the topic and then you have to use active voice in expository writing and you have to write topic sentence for the paragraphs and you have to give facts and examples to explain and extend the discussion and you have to uh, develop the ideas in a very logical way and you have to be brief short and clear and then you have to try to stick to industry standard words instead of using creative explanations because in every uh, every field and every discipline there is a technical uh, there is a technical register uh, there are some technical words that are used so instead of coming up with some creative uh, new words about things in expository writing you have to use those technical words those technical vocabulary items so these were uh, uh, some tips for expository writing today we talked about descriptive writing narrative writing persuasive writing and expository writing thank you for watching this lecture and if you want to check the whole course you can check the description there you will find a link and once you will click at the link that will lead you towards the whole course where you can find the videos from start to end take care of yourself see you in the next video allah hafiz